Let's take a look at adding alternatives. Your alternatives, also known as concepts, are the different options that your survey participants or potential consumers are considering. If you were to conduct a conjure analysis of fruit juice, then your alternatives would be different types of fruit juice. Or if you wanted to research people's preferences for health insurance, then the alternatives would be different health insurance plans. In this example, let's do a conjure analysis for bread. Adding alternatives is optional. If we want, we can publish the survey without having any specific alternatives defined, just to gather data on people's preferences when it comes to bread, whether they care more about price or about nutritional content or maybe something else. We can also choose to add alternatives after closing the survey, and the alternatives will then be ranked according to the data about people's preferences obtained from the survey. Alternatives can be added either by entering them manually or importing alternatives and their criteria from an Excel file. If you already have a list of alternatives with their criteria filled in, then it would be easier to import this from an Excel file rather than adding alternatives manually. We'll go over importing alternatives from an Excel datasheet in another video, so here we will focus on manually entering and editing alternatives. To access this page, on the menu on the left, click on Alternatives. Now let's get started. We can either add alternatives one by one, or bulk add a list of alternative names. To quickly add many alternatives at the same time, click on Bulk Add and enter the name of one alternative on each line. When we're done entering the alternative names, we'll click Add, and our alternatives will appear in the table here. Now we just have to fill out the attributes for each alternative. After participants finish the survey, it will be cool to show them which of our alternatives is the most suited to their tastes. We can add a description or an image for each alternative to show our participants by clicking the Edit button left of the alternative name. We'll add a short description in this text box and click on the square to upload an image from our computer. However, both of these things are optional. We can also add alternatives one by one by clicking on New Alternative instead of Bulk Add. Then we can fill out the information for that alternative here and either go back to view our list of alternatives or add a new alternative right away. The bulk add and new alternative options are also available up here, so we can add a new alternative using either option at any time. To duplicate an item on a list, we can select a row and click on copy. Or maybe we want to clear the entries and the attributes for one of our alternatives, so we'll select a row we want to clear and click Reset Data. Or we can even delete the row completely by clicking on Delete. Let's take a look at all of our possible alternatives. Here we are given all the combinations that could be possible with the attributes and the levels that we included. These are not necessarily any real existing products, they just show us what could hypothetically be possible. And this could be a useful proxy or starting point if we don't have any real alternatives defined yet. From this list, we see that the ideal bread according to how we defined our levels would be the one that has nutritional content claim made, contains no additives, has a long shelf life, costs only $1, which is the lowest price that we defined, and is made by a well-known brand. This could be a really good alternative. So let's add this hypothetical alternative from here to our alternatives list. We'll do this by checking the box next to that alternative and clicking Copy to Alternatives. Here we see the hypothetical alternative that we just added. But it doesn't have a name yet, so let's give it a name to match with our existing alternative list. We can easily edit any field by clicking on it and entering a new name or value. 
This list looks pretty good now, and we might want to use it in other applications. Let's add an ID or custom label for our alternatives, which can be helpful when identifying an alternative, especially when importing or exporting the data for use in other applications. If you like, we can export the alternatives into Excel by clicking on Export. Now that we have a list of alternatives, we can have fun gathering data and analyzing it using 1000 Minds.